Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the Homeless and the Poor, pastor and founder Vince Rosado. My name is Minister Warren Rudd. I'm a licensed minister by my bishop, Jimmy A. Ellis III, out of Victory Christian Center of Philadelphia in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tonight's Bible study is going to be on the world is our enemy. My bishop taught this years and years ago, and I decided I want to bring this here to show the people what the world says we should do and what we should not do, but we want to also find out what Jesus told us what we should do concerning the world. So sit back, get a paper and pencil, and as I always say, there you go, right there. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Enjoy. Starting at verse 18. John 15, starting at verse 18, it says, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, because you are not of the world, if you're born again, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Verse 20. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Final verse. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for the word that brother and come forth. We thank you for those who are in the earshot of this word today. Because, you know, the holidays are coming, the world has a way of performing things, but we also know that you have a way of performing things, too. So let your man serve and decrease, that you may increase. Let me be able to establish, build, and God, the men and women and children of God. I ask these things in Jesus' name, and let the house say, Amen. 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 Tonight's sermon is going to be, The World is Our Enemy. I'm going to talk about the world being our enemy today. Okay? And as you saw... If we look at verse 18 of that again, he said, if the world hated you, you know that it hated me. Amen. Amen. For it hated you. The world hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, the Bible tells us, we are in the world, but not of the world. Amen. 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 Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <laughs> First Corinthians 2 and verses start at verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teach, but which the Holy Ghost teach comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the what? Mind of Christ. Go to James chapter 1. <coughs> James chapter 1. I'm just building a foundation. <coughs> James chapter 1. <coughs> and look at verse 27. James 1, 27 says, Pure religion... And under, my Bible is ripped up here. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. Visit the fathers and the widows, their affliction, and keep them unspotted from the what? World. From the world. The world is our enemy. Now, one of the things I want to tell you about the world, for those of you who are taking notes, the word world has three different meanings in the Bible. It has three different meanings. Number one means earth or land. So the word world could either mean in the Bible earth or land. Number two, inhabitants or the people. So there's places in the Bible when he says the world, he's talking about us, the inhabitants of this earth, or we, the people. And then finally, 
the world system or course of this world. That's what we're going to talk about. Y'all know, y'all ever heard of the term New World Order and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, we see what's happening over there in Europe and all that. Sooner or later, the world's going to come unified in what? One currency? Uh huh. And we even have some sects that are trying to do that, some secret societies, you know. How many of you ever heard of Bilderbergs? You ever heard of them? Yeah. The Bilderbergs. Yeah, I know you heard of the Masons and the Illuminati and all that, but the Bilderbergs, uh, they're finally, their secrets are starting to come out. And they're the ones trying to get a new world order here. And it's got to happen. It's going to happen. Amen? So we know that the word world could be earth or land, inhabitants or people, world system or course of this world. Go back to John chapter 1. I'm going to show you in verse where Jesus even talked about it. John chapter 1. Uh, you're probably saying, Warren, why are you bringing this message and it's coming close to Christmas? Is because I don't focus on things. When we get around these holidays, we, we seem to submit ourselves to the world's ways. We seem to follow the world's ways of doing holidays by saying Xmas and happy holidays. But nobody is saying what it really represents. Jesus Christ. Christmas Christ. Don't say, if somebody say happy holiday, you say, Merry Jesus. Amen. Amen. Somebody say Xmas. No, say Christmas, Christmas. Amen? Because that's who it's about. That's who it's about. But the world is our enemy. And we tend to, as Christians, seem to follow everything they tell us to do instead of what God tells us to do. Amen? That's the truth, man. So, look at verse 10 of John 1 and verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Now, you see the word, word, world mentioned three times there. So, when you see he was in the world, that means earth and land. He was in the earth and land. And the world, that world there means the inhabitants. He was in the world and the inhabitants, us, the people. And the inhabitants was made by him, the people. And the things in the world were made by him. So he was in the earth and the land and the inhabitants, us and everything in it, was made by him. And what did it say? And the world knew him not. That's another word for the inhabitants. So the things he made knew him not. Not even the people they inhabited knew him not. One verse you see the word world meant what? A couple of different things, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Meant a couple of different things. So therefore he said, I was in the earth and you knew me not. I made you and you knew me not. Because you keep on going through the course of this world. Amen? But we want to show you tonight today what you want to do. So let's look at a word. Uh, one of the third means to deal with the course of this world. What are your Ephesians chapter 2? I'm trying to take my time tonight, amen? amen? Because we're getting around a time where a lot of spirits are going to rain, tension is raining, people want you to be joyful, you know? They, they're looking towards the world for their happiness around this time, or they get totally, totally depressed because they can't meet the standards of the world to so do that. You know, holidays are coming, you want to be with your family, and your family don't want you near. Yes, yeah, no. You know, you ain't got enough money in your pocket. You can't eat this. Don't let these things depress you. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Be joyful right now that you are in him. Amen. Your greatest gift. We talked about the gifts of the body, what, last week? The greatest gift you have is what he's giving you. Don't worry about it if you don't have it this year. It ain't all about that. The world made you think that way. Because they want to get rich off of you. Yeah. Amen. But be happy. Boy, I woke up this morning. I got a chance to eat this morning. I'm walking and talking and being able to hug somebody and give a good word. I got clothes on my back. Why aren't you rejoicing over that? Amen. Don't be focused on what the world's trying to take. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2. And look at verses 1 through 2. Now we saw in the previous verse that we saw where Jesus said the world, meaning earth and the land, and also the inhabitants. Now we're going to see who's a part of the course of this world. Ready? Verse 1. And you have he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin, where in time past you walked according to the what? Course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh what? In the children of disobedience. So the course of this world is controlled by who? The devil. He's called the prince of the atmosphere. He's the prince of this world. Well, no, Warren. They told me the devil's in hell. They lied to you. 
The devil's not in hell, people. How are you going to send them somewhere God ain't sending them yet? He still reigns in the earth. He still owns the earth. His deed is not up. Well, Jesus wanted that. He sure did. But the devil's deed is not up. When you say prince of the air, when you walk outside during the day, you see those beautiful clouds? That's where he reigns. You can't send them nowhere. God ain't sent them yet. That's why he's called the prince of this world. That's why God says, I sent a recipe for you to line up with me so you can get past that atmosphere with your prayer so I can hear it. But if you ain't right with me, your prayer don't pass the atmosphere. Amen. Amen. It don't pass those clouds. It really don't. That's for you who are spiritual and understand spiritual things like you've read in the beginning. So the devil ain't in hell, people. He know his destiny is hell. Amen. His destiny is hell. Well, I've been raised all my life, and I heard my mama say, we send you to hell, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Well, your mama didn't know what she was talking about. You can bind him up and cast him out of here, but you can't send him nowhere. God ain't sending him here. Amen. The Bible clearly said there are only a certain angels who are in hell right now. We were just talking about it. And those are the angels who, who fell in Noah's bed, who saw women and wanted to sleep with them. And that's how the giants came in the land. You said, well, Noah's day was because of the flood. No, that flood came because them angels saw women in the earth and saw that they were fine and wanted to sleep with them and had babies. And that's where the nippolims and riffolims come from, which means giants. That's why we got six foot five and seven foot nine and nine foot men that is, uh, people in the land, Jeffrey. He's a very tall man. He might have a million in there. Amen. But that's how giants came in the land. And when those angels did that, they are not the ones who fell with Satan. This was the second fall of angels. They're already in hell because when the angel stops doing what he's supposed to do, he immediately goes to hell. Okay? If you didn't know that, you know it now. Amen? All right. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2. So, stop saying the devil's in hell when he isn't. He is the prince of the atmosphere. Isn't that what the scripture said? He's the prince of this world. Yes, Jesus won it back, but the deed ain't up. Amen. That's why the Bible told us we're in the world, but not of it. And that's why it also says there's going to be a new earth and new heaven when he comes back. Because this world is still owned by Satan. That's why his job is to take as many of you with him to hell as he possibly can, because he knows his destiny is hell. So he wants to destroy as many of God's people that he can to go with him. Y'all want to go with him? I know. I know I don't. <laughs> Amen. Colossians chapter 2. Look at verses 6 through 10. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. Start there. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk you in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through what? Philosophy. There's your scripture on philosophy. Don't trust philosophy. Philosophy is different from psychology, okay? Philosophy, you know, like in the Greeks they had, uh, uh, what's some of them, um, Greek uh, mythologies and all that stuff. You don't believe in that? Confucius, yeah, thank you. Socrates and all those folks. You don't believe in that. But Jesus did say he transformed by the renewing in your mind. That's, that is psychology, okay? Philosophy is different, all right? All right, verse 8 again. Beware lest any man spoil you through a philosophy and vain to see after traditions of men, after the rudiments of the what? World, and not after Christ. Keep reading. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead, both bodily. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Go back up to verse 8 again. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain to see after the rudiments of of men after the rudiments of this world. What are the rudiments of this world? The ABCs of this world. Everybody knows how the world operates. So if you're in business, you know how you're supposed to operate, even if you want to steal or corrupt someone. If you're in the hood, you know how that operates. You know the ABCs of that. You know the ABCs on how to what? Roll a block. You know the ABCs on how to cook up some cocaine, don't you? Come on. Somebody had to teach you the rudiments of how to do it. You know the ABCs on how to plant weed. Come on. You know the ABCs on whether you want it on the rocks or with ginger ale or with coke. Oh, I'm going to talk to myself here. Learn the ABCs of God's way. Because the devil's been teaching you.
teaching you his way. Amen. So, he says, you know the ABCs of this world, but now it's time to learn the God thing and learn it bodily, fullness in Christ. Amen. Go to Galatians chapter 4, two books back. Galatians chapter 4. We didn't got started yet. Still building the foundation. Still building the foundation. Amen. To be honest, this was one of the first lessons I ever learned when I got born again at my church with my bishop, Jimmy A. L. III. This is one of the first lessons that we had to go there. You had to have paper, pad, and pencil. No matter how old you were, you were sitting in the congregation after we finished singing songs, dancing around, falling and kicking over chairs, and singing songs. <laughs> We had to sit down and learn the Bible. Emphatically, I mean, the kids couldn't make noise. If a kid was making noise, they had to, the parents had to get that kid up and take him out. Amen. Seriously. That's how and if they, if they didn't, the ushers were commanded to tell them parents to get that kid out of the sanctuary Amen. because they're disrupting God. I mean, I go to churches down here, babies are hollering and all. See, I'm not used to that. Where I'm from, you know, get the baby out of the sanctuary. You're disrupting the man of God. You don't do it. Amen. But the kids better be in order. They want to sit there and I watched her. I was looking at you last week. You are, believe me, God's ready to bless you, brother. I was watching you on the video and you were taking note to note, precept to precept, even though those kids were getting like, well, I said, look at them walking task. <laughs> but you were doing good. Amen. People are hunting for it. They're taking notes. They're doing everything. But we were required to sit there, no matter how old you were. You better have no, if the only ones who didn't have a Bible pad and temple were visitors. But if you are a member of that church, you have Bible, pad, and paper. Ready to go. Ready to go. What did I say? Galatians 4. Mm -hmm. So coming down here, it's kind of it's kind of mixed up with me because when I go into churches and I hear people making a lot of noise, what, I'm not talking about noise like amen and hallelujah. I'm talking about just disrupting. You know, the preacher's still preaching. I be wanting to get up and say, shut up. You know, but that's the word of the church down here. What can I say? You know, but I was talking, hey, you don't disrupt God. <laughs> you just don't. Amen. Galatians chapter 4. Verses 3 through 4 says what? Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the what? The world. There you go again. You're in bondage under the elements of the world. How to do things according to the world's way. You talk worldly. You listen worldly. You watch things worldly. You know what I mean? You know the world better than you know God. Amen. Why? Because he's the prince of this world. Amen. Read verse 4. But when the fullness of time has come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Let's keep reading. And because we are sons, God sent forth his spirit unto his son, uh, unto his son, into your hearts, crying what? Abba, Father. Daddy, Daddy. So Abba, Father is just an Aramaic word. They spoke Aramaic then meaning daddy, daddy. But look back up again at verse 3. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the what? The elements of the world. But as you come to Christ, you're going to learn. You're going to learn that you are not in this world. You're in this world, but not of this world. And that's a very important part. Now, here's the thing that gets us in the world. Satan, flesh, and the world are your enemies. You can't stay free hanging around old things and habits. Amen. You can't get free staying around old things and habits. Satan gets you to see things over and over until you break down and do it. I was talking to a brother today, and I thank God he came to me with his heart, because Satan is causing him to see things over and over, but God is allowing that thing so he can mature. Amen. Amen. You be thinking it's an attack, but it's a part of your maturity. Amen. So, Satan gets you to see things over and over so that you'll break down and do it. Satan's best quality is he is persistent. He don't come at you. He comes at you with the same weapons each and every single time. The Bible has said, even started way back in Genesis, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Started back with Adam and Eve. That's what he did her with. Lust of the eyes. Hey, look at this. Lust of the flesh. Now, do you want it? And the pride of life. I got to have you. Amen? That's the only way he comes at you. And he does it each and every time. But one of the things you must understand about Satan is this. He don't know or cannot read your mind. Amen. He can only go on what comes out of your mouth. And he can't be at every place at one time. Y'all give him more power and more credit than God. Well, that's Satan after me. No, that's you after me. <laughs> you want to know who Satan is? Go to the nearest mirror and look at him. <laughs> Because he, you cause yourself more 
wish you just Satan would do any time. Satan would sit back, I ain't did nothing. But I set it up. All I did was set it up. Here it is. Look. Come get it, baby. Do it smell good? There was a time we used to smell so good to me. And I'm talking about when we used to roll it up with easy wives and them top paper. That stuff y'all rolled it up with the day stink. Hey, no. Same thing with crack. Amen. The only ones who know what crack smell like is those who doing it. The only one who knows what crack smell like are you who are doing it. <laughs> because I could smoke crack in my house all day long because my first wife didn't know it. She goes, what's that smell? And she had no idea. But as soon as somebody came in, hey man, you smoke crack. I knew he smoked too. <laughs> Concerning the world. You see if I can get my thing to move here. Amen. Alright. Here's the world's philosophy. The world's philosophy is this. I got four things I read, wrote down here. Make riches your priority. Money over God. Amen. Go to Jeremiah. Make riches your priority. Jeremiah 20. No, make it Jeremiah 9. Make riches your priority. Jeremiah what? Jeremiah chapter 9. So the world tells us we need to be hungry for getting rich. But didn't Jesus say, a rich man cannot enter the kingdom of God? Because his main focus is what? On getting rich. Amen. So, money is over God. God, Jesus even said, man can't serve what? Two masters. Mammon and him. Mammon is the God of money. You can't serve. Money is supposed to serve you, not you serve it. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with money. But if you're serving it, it's your God. Amen. So, verse 23. Thus said the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his what? Riches. Riches. Amen. Amen. Keep on going. Verse 24. Let him that glory, glory, let him that glorify glory in this, that he understands and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, said the Lord. So you don't delight when you want to get rich. What's the second thing the world tells us to do? Power and fame lust after. You can always tell a cult member. You want to know who a cult member is? If you want to be, if you want to go to a part of church, my pastor used to teach me back in the day, you always ask a man of God or a leader two questions. You know what they are? Who is your leader? Right? And what's your vision? So if the man of God that you're, who's a leader, Pastor Rosati got a leader, I have a leader, everybody in leadership should have somebody they're accountable to. So if that man can't answer who their leader is, well, I'm, you know, God just called me to be the leader. Something wrong. If you ask them, what's your vision? They can't give it out. Like, for instance, my old church vision was this. Teach the word, win soul, and provide a place of rest for weary soul. Now, that's a big picture, but it's simplified, isn't it? And it was instilled in me. That's why I love teaching the word, I love winning souls, and I love providing a place for restful weary souls. That's what my church taught me for years. Amen. 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 Ain't saying get rich, did it? No. Ain't saying fill your pockets. No. It's about helping others. Amen. Amen. So if you talk to a man, I want brother to take me all day to explain my vision to you. Run! <laughs> I know that's right. Run! That ain't the place for me. Because you should be able to simplify what your vision is. Just that simple. And why is this? You can always tell them too, because people who are hung up in cults do this. Power, money, and sex. If they're about only power, if they're only about money, and they're about getting you in the bed, you need to get away from that church. Amen. Amen. And, and I 